Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly pop culture wrap up. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is the weekly pop culture wrap up. It's the show where I go over the week's pop culture news, mostly comic books and movies. Let's get right into it with some comic book news. Batman Reptilian. It's a new comic book, a six-issue miniseries, debuting in June from DC Comics. Why do we care about yet another Batman miniseries, even though it's DC Black Label and focusing in on Killer Croc? Well, maybe it's because it's written by Garth Ennis with artwork by Liam Sharp. Now, Liam Sharp has just come off the work of his career with The Green Lantern, season one and two, written by Grant Morrison, but with artwork by Liam Sharp, and the artwork just kept getting better and better. And if you look at preview pages for this upcoming book, it looks freaking fantastic. And it's Garth Ennis. And it feels like this could be a Garth Ennis book where he's not necessarily making fun of superheroes, but actually doing something dark with it. Batman seems to work if... If Ennis wants to do a superhero book, he's usually making fun of superheroes, right? Or he's doing an interesting take on something, but with the combination of Ennis and Sharp, I am really freaking excited. So six issues, DC Black Label, starting in June. Liam Sharp, Garth Ennis, Batman Reptilian, in their own continuity-free, very scary, hopefully super twisted, Killer Croc Batman story. The Nice House on the Lake is going to be a 12-issue horror series over at DC Black Label. This is not tied into any DC brand or characters. This is a original story created by James Tynan IV, as well as artwork by Alvaro Martinez Bueno. Now, we've seen Bueno and we've seen Tynan work before together on books like, come on, Justice League Dark, Detective Comics, amazing stuff. Very excited for this. Plus, we got Jordi Belair on the coloring. So a 12-issue horror sort of indie type series from DC Black Label from Tynan, Bueno, and Bel Air. That's going to be The Nice House on the Lake. That starts in June. Batman The Adventures Continue Season 2. That's right, we're getting more of this. The exact same team from the previous volume, Ty Templeton on the artwork, Paul Dini um, co-writing the script, but this is going to continue on the idea of Batman the Animated Series. What if it continued on? In the first season, we had the introduction of Jason Todd. We had the introduction of the animated Deathstroke and Azrael. What do we get in season two? Court of Owls. Super excited. That show, I mean, that book was actually really cool, especially for fans of the show, so I'm glad it's coming back. It's a digital first book, just like the previous volume, but it will be releasing in print in June from DC Comics. Checkmates coming from DC Comics in June as well. This is Brian Michael Bendis, Alex Maleev. This was originally planned to come out last year as Event Leviathan Checkmate, but nobody cared about Event Leviathan except for Brian Michael Bendis, so they have just rebranded this Checkmate. Now I'm sure that there's going to be still some kind of threads and ties and all that kind of stuff to it, but <clears throat> it's finally coming. This is the kind of series that I think Bendis would really excel at at DC, especially with Alex Maleev on the artwork. Um, hopefully we're veering away from the idea of this whole Leviathan thing, but obviously it's still going to be a part of it. But I'm excited to check it out, but I'm very... Taking it with a grain of salt, we shall see. Um, Crush and Lobo is going to be an eight-issue series. This is about Lobo and I guess his daughter Crush. Um, I've only read a few of her appearances, so I'm not like 100% on that character. Um, but an eight-issue series starting in June. It's going to be written by Mariko Tamaki with artwork by Amon K. Naulpan. Probably, probably butchered that name, but it's okay. Because if you're a Lobo fan, this is your next Lobo book. And it's going to be like Lobo and Daughter. So that could be pretty freaking cool. Um, also in June, DC Pride is coming out. It's going to be a one-shot comic book focusing on characters from the DC Universe that are part of the LGBTQ plus community. As well as creators that are part of that community. It's going to have work from Tynan, Steve Orlando, Danny Lore. Very excited for that. I love their work and I'm excited. Uh, Vita Ayala amongst many others. And not to be outshined, Marvel's doing their own Pride Month celebration with Marvel's Voices Pride. It's going to have artwork from Karen Gillan, 
or work from Killen Gillen, uh, Teeny Howard, Leah Williams, Steve Orlando, Mariko Tamaki, uh, both of them, by the way, doing both doing stories in both the DC and the Marvel Pride book. And then we got Planet Size X-Men number one. It's going to be a super double-sized extravaganza. It's kind of tied into the Hellfire Gala. And they say that this is the next big deal in the Hickman universe. Is this book right here is written by Jerry Duggan with artwork by Pepe Larraz. Whenever they have Larraz doing one of these books, it's something to pay attention to. Don't forget, he was the artist on House of X. I'm excited for that. Why? because I really like what Duggan and Hickman and company are doing. I think Pepe is just a fantastic freaking uh, artist. The Worst Dudes debuts in June from Dark Horse. This is very exciting to me. It's uh, written by Aubrey Sitterson with artwork by Tony Grigori. Um, this one's described as Lobo meets The Big Lebowski. It's about like three just kind of scumbags um, getting together, trying to find like this missing pop star or something like that, but it's supposed to just be wild, rambunctious, crude, rude, and fun, and that's what it seems like, and I'm super pumped. Aubrey Sitterson is a great writer. He recently did No One Left to Fight over at Dark Horse Comics. This is going to be another five-issue series from Dark Horse by Aubrey, and um, with the artwork by Tony Grigori, very excited for that. Amen, brother. Um, Canto has been an uh, option to be a TV or a, an animated film, right? Is it Westbrook Productions? I don't know. It's the Will Jada Pinkett Smith uh, production company, but they have optioned Canto. They are developing it as an animated film, I believe. And Canto strikes so right to the heart of, of story and character and, and the hero's journey and just straight to your heart if you really immerse yourself in this world. And I think it's going to be rather, rather powerful. So Canto number one, especially a clean version, is definitely going to be something to have if you have it right now. Because mine, it's got that print defect on it, but I ain't going to sell it. Let's talk about some trailers. I watched some new horror sci-fi type movies. We got The Power. The Power releases from Shudder on April the 8th. The trailer was all right. It's like about this nurse, and now she has to work like the dark shift, the night shift or whatever, and of course there's ghosts, right? So nothing about the trailer seemed like it was going to be really innovative or stretch any further than anything that's been done. It seemed kind of typical. It seemed kind of okay and average, but it was still exciting enough that maybe, maybe we'll check it out. Um, Oxygen have released a trailer. It debuts March, or not March, but May 12th on Netflix, and it's about this woman who is uh chirogenically frozen right and so she wakes up and she's in this cryogenic thing and she's running out of oxygen she can't remember who she is and the computer and like needs to know who i don't know it seemed really rather confusing but you're hearing really great things about this film that is very um filled with with tense tension and suspension suspense and tension and i'm very excited the trailer actually looked cool it does not really do much though but it's it's interesting the unholy it's going to be in theaters on April 2nd. Stars, uh, what's his name? Jeffrey Dean Morgan, right? Um, it's produced by Sam Raimi. This trailer looked awesome, yo. So it's about this chick, and she gets a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary, right? Now she, she can perform miracles. She can heal people. But maybe the root of her power isn't something so holy, but something rather unholy. Get it? Get it? Anyway, the trailer looked really freaking good for this, and I'm very, very pumped. Into the Dark Blood Moon is the latest Into the Dark film from Hulu. It's going to be debuting March 26th. This one looks to be like a werewolf story. It's about a mom. Looks like she's a werewolf. Her kid is probably about to have his first full moon as a werewolf, and she's trying to kind of like hide him and pre prevent people from realizing it. Now, it doesn't quite go all the way out there and, and say that it's a werewolf thing, but it's totally a werewolf thing. Um, the first Into the Dark, and this is a seasonal, uh, kind of thematically relevant um, s series of movies that they've been doing at, at Hulu. I think Blumhouse is doing it. First one I watched was their last one for around Valentine's Day, Tentacles, which blew me away. So I'm definitely paying attention to this one. The trailer was okay. Out of all of these, The Unholy was the trailer that I really, really liked. So that's what we got for you this week. What's coming up here at PCP? Well, we got Rock and Robbie Live tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time. It's going to be a grand old time for join us. So join us then tomorrow, Monday, March 15th. Beware the Ides of March, 6 p.m. Central Time. Rob from Comics Explained is going to be here, right here on Pop Culture Philosophers for Rock and Robbie Live with 
Comics Explained. We're going to have a great chat for about an hour. Please join us. This is 6 p.m. Central Time on Monday. Weekly Comic Book Review Tuesday night. Um, Thursday, we've got... Um, what do we got? We got Elliot Ray Hall on the channel on Thursday night, so that's going to be super, super cool. Friday night's PCP Movie Night, the uh, movie poll winner for the PCP Army March Madness Edition, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the following night. We're doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2 over at Dylan's Horror Show. So, thank you so much for checking out the video. Let us know in the comments below anything you want to talk about, and then get live with us tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time for Rockin' Robbie Live. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and join us over at popculturephilosophers.com for podcast, blogs, and a whole lot more. I've been Rockin' Robbie Phillips. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on living. Station!